Welcome, Soundies, to our Sound for Video session. Today is the 12th of March, 2023. I'm excited because spring is just on the horizon. It is, um, what is the temperature here today? Wait, um, we, have a, we have a mic for Danny today. Just one second. Any idea what the temp is today? Mid to upper 30s. So uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're talking in Fahrenheit here. Um, snowy. Had some good snow this morning. Hope you're all doing well and that you're <laughs> managing the weather in your location uh, in, a, in a good way. All right, let's take a look at our agenda for today. First up, we're going to take a look at something called Auto Align Post 2, which is a uh, plugin. Uh, we're going to demonstrate this actually in Pro Tools, which will be, I think, the first time we've actually demonstrated in Pro Tools here on this stream. Um, I'm very slowly becoming more and more comfortable in Pro Tools, but um, this also has a version that runs in Premiere, and it can also run in other DAWs, although I don't believe it works in Audition. I'm not sure on that, but in any case, we'll demonstrate that in Pro Tools, and uh, just know that there is a version for Premiere as well. And then we'll go to our question and answer session after that. So with that, let's go ahead and jump in, and let me just first talk about what Auto Align Post is. Actually, let's go back to the main camera first. Um, I want to just talk about... Uh, some of the challenges that we face, uh, and I think a lot of you have faced before in production sound for video, and that is, is you'll put a lav mic on somebody, you'll also boom a mic over them, and then in post, or even while you're recording, you listen to it and you're like, mm, something doesn't sound right. <laughs> and usually what's happening there is that you're having uh, some phase differences. So the microphones are at different distances to the sound source. So the boom mic's a little bit farther away than the lavalier microphone is, and they're not perfectly in phase. And so you get comb filtering, and you get constructive and destructive interference. So when the waves are out of sync with each other, out of phase with each other, um, they can make things sound... Uh, it almost sounds robotic, is usually the, the, the ex experience I get. Um, but you also lose some other things. Another challenge is this. If you, well, a couple of more challenges. Number one, sometimes we also use plant microphones. And if, and if actors are moving and you have a plant microphone, the distance between the sound source and the microphone is changing in real time. And yet you have another microphone, which is also out of phase with the others. <laughs> so it gets really pretty tricky. And I think traditionally what what uh, post mixers have done is they have, in cases where they could, they would actually manually align the two uh, two different tracks, the two different microphone channels, and get them as close to in phase as they possibly could. Although it could get really complicated again if the uh, if the actor is moving, even with a boom microphone, which can vary in distance from the actor, whereas the lavalier microphone is typically going to be at the same distance. Um, so even if a an actor is moving, it's not like there's a static offset you can apply to get everything back in phase. It just, it's changing all the time. So it gets really complicated. And there are, there are cases where you'll want to switch between microphones or maybe cases where you want to mix two of the microphones to get a richer sound. Um, but getting that phase just right has always been a bit of a challenge. And that's the problem that Auto Align Post addresses. And so let's go ahead and take a look at their their website really quickly, and then we'll demonstrate it here. So first up, um, Auto Align Post was introduced in 2018. This We're on version 2 at this point, um, and I have to disclose, uh, Sound Radix did give me a copy of this for free, so I could demonstrate it to you, so just be aware of that. Um, and then also, it, it also introduced a new spectral phase correction module. So what this does in essence is when I was talking about the issue of a, an actor moving and getting different distances from the microphone, whether that be the boom microphone or a plant microphone, this can actually go in and change that as well. So it's not just nudging a track a little bit to get it in phase at the start of the track. And then you're just kind of a tough luck after that. This actually will go through the entire track or whatever clip you've selected and align, phase align the entire thing and actually do some other things, including something similar to what we've demonstrated before in Isotope RX, where we use the adaptive phase rotation. Um, this does a similar type thing to that as well to, to ensure that you can get those 
two different clips or multiple, actually even more than two clips into phase with each other. So that's what this does. Um, this is used primarily by post mixers in TV and film. So it's not, a, it's not, it's not cheap. It's $399 US for the initial license. Um, but I wanted to show you what the, what kind of tools they're using in post to get these kind of effects. So let's go ahead and switch over to Pro Tools and show you what we've got here. So uh, for those that have taken the Fairlight course, this, this uh, sound clip will sound familiar to you. What I have is let's go ahead and do just kind of the, the first demo here. Pretty straightforward. I've got four different clips over here. One is Emma talking and she has a boom mic and then I have a boom mic, Emma has a lav mic, and I have a lav mic. So let's do the first one where I just get Emma's boom mic, and we're going to put that here on the first track. And then we're going to get Emma's lavalier microphone and put that sounds like when audio is out of phase between microphones. All right, welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table, and we're going to discuss some of our creative influences. Okay, so that's where we're starting. And if, you, if you're listening on your phone, I would highly recommend, I actually for everyone, I would highly recommend use headphones here if you can, best headphones available to you to really hear these nuanced differences. So it had that kind of weird hollowy edge to it that didn't sound amazing. And so there, there are a couple of approaches and let me just show you, if I come in here and I, let's just zoom in. Let's maybe go right here, whoops. And let's zoom in. Put our playhead right here. And if I go up here, notice that at this point right here, when the bottom track is up, the other track is not. <laughs> and when this one is down, experiencing its rarefaction, when it's in the, it's a, the lower part of the, the waveform here, this one is not, this one is at center. And you even have some where they're even closer here where this the top one's up. This one's down. So that's an example. Now, what I could do is I could drag this and try to try to align them. Let's see if we can do that here. That looks closer. So let's go ahead and zoom back out and let's see how it sounds now. And I'll go ahead and start right here. Let's play that. All right, welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table. Better. Definitely better, and actually quite a bit better. Um, I may have gotten lucky there. <laughs> um, but again, if, if Emma moves, even, even with a stationary boom microphone, if she moves, that phase relationship is going to change. So even though I've nudged it here and it sounds good at the start, that may not hold true through the entire interview, and especially if it were a case where the person were moving around a lot more. But let's go ahead and undo that, and we'll zoom back out again. And again, let's just, again, to reset our ears, this is where we're starting. All right, welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table, and we're going to discuss some of our creative influences. Great. With that, why don't you start us off? What? Okay, now you, you can hear me there. That's me coming through, bleeding into Emma's microphone, so that's another problem. <laughs> and especially if I move, then that phase relationship will change as well. But let's just start here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come up here to our Audio Suite plugins, and I'm going to get Auto Align Post. So this is an offline uh, process here. And so the first thing I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and choose what our reference track is. And I'll use the boom microphone as the reference, and then we'll essentially phase align the lavalier microphone to the boom microphone. So to select the boom microphone, I'm just going to come right in here and choose track one. Okay, now what I do is I select the track that I want to phase align to that reference track, and that's going to be Emma's lavalier microphone. So I'll go ahead and click render, and it will go ahead and run through the entire thing and take care of that. Now let's go ahead and play that back again so that you can hear what it sounds like now. All right, welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table, and we're going to discuss some of our creative influences. Okay, so there is a, is a demonstration of what it does. Now, there are different modes here. So in terms of time, you can just do the like the, the nudge type of change that we demonstrated like manually. You could actually set the, the plug in to essentially do something like that, um, or we can have it be more dynamic and 
change the alignment over time to best match the conditions. Again, people moving and things like that. And then also we have the spectral versus polarity mode. So you can flip the signal's polarity if, if you need to, or you can apply all pass filters to best match the phase in all frequencies. So this is the more sophisticated version uh, or mode that is new or phase uh, mode that's available in this newest version of auto align post. So that's what we did there. We just left it in that default mode there and that's what it did. So there's an example. Why don't we pause there for a minute and let's go take a look and see if we have any questions in the chat here before we move on. Um, does it work in Resolve Fairlight? I have not tested it um, and I don't believe it does. Um, there was a chance that David from, or Daniel, excuse me, from Sound Radix was going to be here potentially at the stream. So Daniel, if you are here, we'd love to get your input in the chat here. Um, I don't believe it works in Fairlight, Christopher. Yet, at least. It does work in Premiere now. It works in Pro Tools. I believe it works in Studio One. Um, I think they said in Nuendo. Um, you can find that those details on the website. In fact, let me go take a look at the website and see if it says uh, what the details are here. Um, what I can do here is I'm going to pull up the user manual. Um, let's go ahead and switch over to the Mac. And there are a couple things here. So if there's an ARA2 version and a, a VST3, you can do it in Premiere Pro. Um, let's see, where are the other... Let's see if the system requirements say... Here are the supported hosts. So Pro Tools 11, Cubase, Nuendo, Reaper, Studio One, and Premiere Pro is currently what is supported. So good question. I'm glad you asked that. Okay. Anything else in the chat for now? Okay. We are going to go ahead and head back over. Let's, um, let's do something more sophisticated. Let's just say, let's undo that for now. So we're starting back where we were. And let me just make sure, confirm, we'll play this back again. Should be out of phase. All right, welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table, and we're gonna discuss some of our creative influences. Okay, so yes, we are indeed. And let's go ahead and grab my boom microphone over here, and let's put that down on the third track here and just see how it does if we need to phase align three different things. So we're gonna come back up to our uh, audio suite plugins, we'll get our auto align post. We've already chosen track one as our reference. So let's go ahead and choose these two to be the ones that we phase align to this one here. So we'll go ahead and click render. And you also notice that the audio suite plugins are not destructive, so they're actually creating new copies when they do that, that phase movement. And you can tell it to automatically put them into the tracks for you, or you can tell them to just put them up here in the clip bin. Um, in our case, we went ahead and put them in the timeline itself. And you can tell they've been auto-aligned here because it, they've changed the name here to at align p. Uh, appended that. So let's go ahead and now play that. Actually, you know what? Before we do that, I forgot to play it beforehand. Let's go ahead and play it beforehand with all three of these and see how that sounds. This is out of phase pre, pre plugin. All right. Welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table and we're going to discuss some of our creative influences. Great. With that, why don't you start us off? What is your first creative influence? Okay. So that's where we're starting. Now let's go grab that and apply it and see what it does for us. So we're gonna come up here to Auto, Audio Suite, Auto Align Post. We've already selected track one, Emma's Boom Microphone as our reference. We'll go ahead and select these two here and we will render to auto align those. It takes it just a moment. This is about a five minute long interview to give you a sense for how long that takes. Not long at all, as it turns out. Let's now go ahead and play through that now that it has been auto-aligned. All right, welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table, and we're gonna discuss some of our creative influences. Great. Okay, 
It did a pretty nice job there. So even with my microphone there, which adds another element of uh, out of phase, um, does all right. Let's play a little bit longer. All right. Welcome, everybody, to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table, and we're going to discuss some of our creative influences. Great. With that, why don't you start us off? What is your first creative influence? Uh, well, I think first on my list, and actually also chronologically, would be Frank Lloyd Wright. Okay. So let me just kind of talk about some of the practicals here. So that does a beautiful job, by the way. That that does a really, really nice job. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to go ahead. Uh, let's see. First of all, I want to get rid of these comments here. We don't need those here. I'm going to mute my boom microphone and let's go ahead and boom, or sorry, mute Emma's lavalier microphone. And I just want to A, B. So I'm going to play the boom, her boom microphone, and then I'm going to switch over to her lavalier microphone. And then I'm going to play both of them together to see where this could be advantageous. Here we go. Just the boom first. All right. Welcome, everybody, to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the table, and we're going to discuss some of our creative influences. Great. With that, why don't you start us off? What is your first creative influence? Uh, well, I think first on my list, and actually also chronologically, would be Frank Lloyd Wright. So I've... The uh, yes, the architect. <laughs> The famous American. <laughs> um, so, of course, like many people, I first became aware of falling water when I was, I don't know, 10 or so. Okay. So it adds another dimension to her voice a little bit there. It's it's fairly subtle, but you can see that it does. I think the lavalier microphone, as it was placed down on the chest, will t tend, tend to pick up a little bit more bass. And so it'll have a little bit more um, richness to it. So that can be nice to be able to to mix the two of those together to some extent, whatever, you know, mix it to taste, whatever works best for you. Another thing that's really interesting too is that if you, if you record, say for example, during production, you have a high pass filter or a low cut filter applied to one of the microphones, that also does funny things to the phase. And let me actually see if we can demonstrate that here. If I go and I get an EQ, um, let's see here. Let me, I'm, I'm used to Nectar. I'm going to go ahead and pull up Nectar. Okay. And I don't remember if this one is a phase, a linear phase plugin or not. Let's go ahead and render it and see what it does. Oh, whoops. We need to select the audio render there. Undo. Let's just go ahead and listen to it first. All right, welcome everybody to our podcast. We are here on a nice snowy afternoon at the kitchen table, and we're going to. So some issues there. <laughs> In any case, let me just describe what happens sometimes. So if you do apply a high pass filter. What can happen is that that can actually drive, especially on men's voices, I've noticed this in particular, because they're already, in some cases, somewhat asymmetric. In other words, sometimes the amplitude is much taller on the top than it is on the bottom, or vice versa. When you use a high-pass filter or a low-cut filter, sometimes that accentuates it even more. It messes with the phase even more. And that is what also makes... Uh, when you're recording with two different microphones, that makes it sound even more comb filtered or more uh, constructive or destructive interfered. So using a high pass filter is good because in, from the standpoint that you are managing some of the low frequencies that are not part of dialogue or not part of voices, but at the same time, it's also potentially creating more problems here in post as far as phase alignment of multiple microphones. So this will also, Auto Align 2 will also address that with its spectral mode. So it does some really, really cool things there. Okay, with that, let's pop on over to the chat again and see what people are talking about over in the chat. Mark, when working with Boom and Lav, would you perform post-editing, EQ, compression, etc., for each ISO, then add them together, or just work with a mix track? Um, well, you can do both. Uh, what would I do? I think you're, when working with Boom, would you? Okay, so I'm going to assume you're meaning, what would I do? <laughs> I think it depends. Um, 
In this case, I'm actually quite happy with the results that I got with Emma's Boom and Lav Mic when it's been auto-aligned. And I'd probably use both of them together. As far as compression, um, if we switch back over to the Mac again here, Danny, taking a look at this, I think you might need to use, um, you know, if you're going to do any sort of corrective EQ, especially if you're going to do a high pass filter, I would do that before the auto align. And then what you could do is send it all to a bus. And then from there, I would probably compress, add the, the compressor on the bus um, is probably how I would approach that. So you could have an Emma bus and you could have a Curtis bus in this case, <laughs> and then apply the compression on each of those. So that's probably what I do. But if I was going to do any sort of corrective EQ, I would do that first um, because that is the, has a potential to change the phase of the individual track. Now, there are post linear phase or phase linear uh, EQs that don't affect the, uh, the phase of the waveform. So you'll just need to understand what yours does. Unless it says, and I, I can show you an example actually, if I pull open, uh, let me pop over to RX. Just open this up. Give me just a second, there we go. Okay, so here is a file here. If I go into EQ here, I have two options here. You notice I have an analog option and I have a digital option. This digital option is actually a linear phase um, EQ. So what that means is it should not affect phase. But you'll notice here, let me just do this here. I've got a high pass filter just to demonstrate what I was trying to demonstrate before. Got a 65 hertz high pass filter, 24 dB per octave. Um, again, set at 65. Let's go ahead and run that. And actually, before I do that, let's pull up our loudness control and, and get our max peak reading. Our max true peak is... 0.9. It actually goes over zero. So let's see what happens after I'm in analog mode. So this could affect my phase. I'm going to go ahead and render. Okay. It looks like it definitely did. Now if I come back over here, now my max true peak is 0.8. It changed it a little bit. Um, but it looks far more asymmetric now, if you notice that. So if I undo that just really quickly... Notice that it's closer to, to, to symmetric. So you have to be careful with EQs because they can actually change that. Now you'll notice here, if I do the same thing with this digital EQ, um, our true peak's at 0.9, and just watch the waveform here. Just get, get this out of the way as much as I can. It didn't change the phase at all. Um, so there's some things there to consider. Now, are there audible differences? Potentially, that's something to, to account for as well. Digital EQ that are linear phase may sound a little bit different than analog. And sometimes in music, we're really trying to color the sound in, in kind of clever, vintage ways. <laughs> so, so sometimes you want that. Um, but that, that was what I was trying to demonstrate here as far as EQ is concerned. So good question, Mark. Hopefully that answers, gives you a little bit more context. All right, does this tool offer anything for live sound um, or broadcast? I don't think so. I don't. I think it's this is more for post. It's, it's in the name. It's for post. <laughs> so it's really made for post. There's also a version for music that does um, some... It's not as quite as sophisticated as I understand. It's more for when you have a performer, a musician, a vocalist sing the same line or same the same line from a song twice, and then you want to essentially create a chorus out of it just to kind of line those up a little bit. So that's a separate tool, separate plugin called Auto Align. And then the one we showed here is Auto Align Post. So I don't think it's for live. Uh, JF, are you running Pro Tools with Rosetta 2 emulation as recommended by the web page you showed? Does it work? Does it now work natively too? Um, I'm not really... I don't think this is the Rosetta version. Um, yeah, I don't think it is. I think it's native now, but I'm not positive. I don't know for sure. Short version, I don't know the answer. I'm sorry. Okay, Robert. The wavelength of a 3.5 kilohertz signal is about 4 inches. So if the speaker is moving back and forth, they swap across one entire sine wave. Thank you, Robert, for the, the math there to give a very practical example. So if a, if a if an actor is moving and that microphone moves within that four inch range, you can go 180 degrees out of phase automatically, which means you could actually get full on cancellation 
um, if everything were static. So that demonstrates just four inches of the boom pole difference can make a huge, huge difference. Thanks for that, Robert. Would it also replace pluralize? Um, I mean, you, you could use it like that. Although, yeah, you could use it. Be, it'd be pretty manual. Um, if you're doing one, long takes, then yeah, it, it could certainly do it. Um, but I, I don't know. It, pluralize is a different tool that I... I mean, pluralize is one where you just kind of drop all the clips <laughs> into a bin, uh, including the video clips, and just whoosh, it lines it all up. So... Um, I mean, this would be kind of a short version. This would be a way to do that, but probably not as co convenient as Pluralize. And Pluralize is kind of aimed at a different thing. So I would use this after Pluralize to really get things in phase, whereas Pluralize is literally just nudging things back and forth. It's not it's not doing the phase, um, the, the spectral alignment and stuff like that. So, Craig. Is there a standalone application, any batch processing for multiple files? Not that I'm aware of. No. It's meant to be used within the digital audio workstation. Any time limits on the correction? Will it handle 4 millisecond delay on digital wireless? Should. Yeah, it shouldn't have a problem with that at all. Um, I believe it can move up to 100 milliseconds, if I remember right. Let's go back here. Yeah, it can microphones time alignment of up to plus or one plus or minus 100 milliseconds or distances up to 112 feet, about 34 meters. So to answer your question, yes. Okay. All right. That's everything. Okay. Let's go ahead and jump over to the questions that were submitted ahead of time. I might need some help with some of these here. So here we go. All right. First up is from Graham. Is there a standalone device on the market that will extract embedded HDMI timecode and send it out as linear or longitudinal timecode? My, I think you're talking about, um, yeah, lo longitudinal timecode. My camera will send HDMI timecode to the MixPre 3 version 2, but the MixPre cannot send it out as linear timecode to my UltraSync 1. At the same time, my camera can send HDMI timecode to a Ninja 5, but the Ninja 5's HDMI out with timecode is not recognized by the MixPre, so I am confused. Okay, um, I don't know entirely. I, I assume, Graham, what you're trying to achieve is you're trying to get the same timecode on the camera, on the Atomos recorder, and on the MixPre at the same time. So I don't know. Here's what I have observed with Atomos recorders, which I like, and I use it. We use them at work all the time. I don't use them so much in my, my own personal work at this point, my, like, for example, I'm usually filming with a Canon C70 and it does, its internal codecs are just fantastic. So I don't really have a need to use the Atomos recorders. But when I was using them more often, the problem I saw was that if you had a camera, an Atomos recorder, and a MixPre, and you were trying to use the um, HDMI timecode capabilities of all three of the, all three of them in, in essence, was that you could get the camera's feed into the Atomos with timecode via HDMI, but then you use the HDMI output on the Atomos and get that into the MixPre, and it wouldn't forward the, the timecode for whatever reason. <clears throat> um, what some people found, and I don't, I don't have a solution to this, but what some people said they found was that if they used an HDMI splitter and took the feed from the camera and then split it, sent one to the Atomos and one to the MixPre, then they could get it to work. So that's that's one thing to consider. I don't know if anyone else has more experience with that in the chat, but if you do and you have some additional insights for Graham, by all means, please share them. Would appreciate that very much. So Graham, hopefully that's helpful for you. All right, next up, um, Dave has a use case here and asking about auto-align post. My use case is concert taping. I'm usually grabbing stereo pairs, frequently near coincidental patterns at stage lip, but also sometimes with spread omnis at each side of the stage. And I'll frequently grab the house left and right soundboard feed as well. Would I need to pick one channel for this software to key on? Or is there functionality that will allow me to set a pair as the reference track? Any other suggestions? 
Um, I don't know the answer to that off the top of my head, Dave. Um, possibly, Daniel, if you're here from Sound Radix, I'd love it if you could weigh in on that. Um, but I don't know. I know in the plugin itself, if we go take a look at it here, if I go back over to Pro Tools, let's switch over to the Mac here, and I come back in. There is this multi-input mode or mono mode. So it does appear that you can use... Um, like a, it seems like you could get a, an, an, a stereo as the reference. I don't know what that does to... Because stereo recordings, in essence, are using... Depending on the stereo method you're using, so a, an XY or an AB or something where the microphones are relatively close to each other, you're not necessarily going to have as many of the issues with... as big of issue with the sound arriving to the microphones at different times. However, the, the very kind of nature of stereo recording from my point of view is that you you do have, I mean, the way you get the stereophonic effect is that it's it's phase. It's essentially phase that's, that's creating that. So I don't know what this does, but it does look like you can choose a stereo track as a reference track. So I don't know, I haven't, I don't have any firsthand experience with that to say exactly how that pans out, but that's that's the general idea. And Daniel, again, if you're there, would love your input uh, from the company. Okay, let's go back to the chat and see if there are any questions. There are people, we have a lot of time. So if you've got questions, now is the time. We've got a full 29 minutes, it looks like. Um, I hope everyone's adapting well for those in the United States that just had daylight savings or elsewhere in the world, if you've had daylight savings. Um, we're still doing it here, except for Arizona. Uh, so... <laughs> Um, feels like a little bit less sleep that one, one day of the year. I've lived in two states. Danny has lived in two states. In fact, just one second here. You can describe to us while we're waiting for those questions to roll in. Let me just get over here to the mixer. I've lived in two states that did not observe daylight savings time. Which two states? Indiana and Arizona. Indiana apparently now observes it but it did not when I was growing up. Ah, okay, so there you go. So Danny is, is trying to evade daylight savings. <laughs> All right, let's see what we've got going in the chat here. All right, Mark, I have struggled with a solution to start stop code from camera through ninjas to mix pre three. Only solution I found was a powered HDMI splitter. That was the same, that, that was my understanding as well, Mark. So thanks for sharing that. If you have any uh, input on which powered HDMI splitter you're using, the trick with it, powered HDMI splitters is that you gotta power them. And if you're on your camera rig and you don't necessarily have access to power or AC power, which is oftentimes how those are configured or set up, they're, they're made to take AC power. Um, it can be a little tricky on a mobile camera rig. But if you've got a specific HDMI splitter you use, we'd love to hear about that and how you, how you power it. Matt says, um, Kurt Shot Audio and Graham, I use Tentacle Sync on the camera and on the Mix Pre and Atomos get time code from the camera fine, so that's what I do. Use a Tentacle Sync on the camera and on the Mix Pre. The Atomos then gets the time code from the camera fine. Okay, so you're using, tip, you're using ten, Tentacle Sync time code generators on the Mix, P, or Mix Pre and the camera. <laughs> we call we call it a mix P around here for 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 reasons that are historical. Uh, Emma once called it a mix P on a live stream, and we just we love that name, so we say it sometimes. All right, Kevin says, how do you import all of your clips on the right side of Pro Tools? Well, let me show you. We can go back over to Pro Tools. Um, so if you just come up here to File, Import, let's choose Audio. Um, these are actually already imported, but I could just choose those, choose to add them, and then when I click open, I get an option to either add it to a new track or put it in the clip list. This is the clip list. I click OK, and they just show up over here in the clip list, and then I can drag them to whichever tracks I need. So incidentally, th those are um, those original tracks are actually poly wave files with four channels. So that's how you can essentially split up a poly wave file here in Pro Tools. Great question. Okay, Mark. Uh, Kershaw Audio and Matt Ruff, I use. I also use tentacles on Mix Pre and Ninjas. 
Okay, there you go. There's another solution there. So using time code generators themselves. Daniel asks, would it be possible to have the announcement email sent out earlier than the night before the live stream, maybe Sunday, Saturday morning or even Friday evening? Um, I would sure, I'll sure try, Daniel. Um, I'm usually really time crunched with my day job. And so usually what I need to do is I, sp I have to do my regular routine, like I'll try. Let's just leave it at that. I'll try <laughs> to get them out a little. I know last night's or yesterday's was really late. Usually I try to get it out by noon on Saturday, my time. Um, sometimes I don't quite achieve that like yesterday. So apologies for that. Uh, Robert, where does Resolve store the actual project file? I like to keep the project file with the actual footage in a single directory. Is there a way to change settings to do this? Um, I believe, at least traditionally, what Resolve was doing was actually storing a project within a database on all of the projects that you had on that particular computer within a database on that computer. So it wasn't like there was a separate project file like with most other applications like Final Cut or like Premiere. Um, however, you can export one. Um, I don't really have anything. I don't know if I have anything set up. Give me just a minute here. Um, you yeah, go ahead and switch back. I don't. I, I don't know if this is going to work or not. But let me pull up. Fair, oh, let me pull up Resolve and see if I can get this working. You have to. In essence, you have to export. Um, and you can store that with the project with in a project folder with everything else, but. The project itself is stored, I believe, in a database that's separate. So there's not, it's not quite the same as other nonlinear editors. That's the short version. Um, so go ahead, let's go ahead and switch to the Mac at this point. So I believe all of these, for example, when I first opened this, this is not just like a recent projects that you worked on. I mean, it is that, but it's also, I think these are all of the things that are stored in this particular database that you have set up on this computer. At least that's the way, oh yeah, these are the local ones. You can also do it over the network or the cloud if you have the, the right setup there, but I believe it's actually storing it in a database. Um, let's, let's go ahead and try. Let's go, this one should still be here. This is the one we used last week. Oh, there's an update. How about that? Um, we'll have to come back to that. I'll skip it for now. But I believe you can export the project right there, which makes a, I think it's a .drp file which is DaVinci Resolve project file <laughs> um, and you can re-import that later. So that's, I think, the, the closest you're going to get with Resolve. Okay, JF, maybe there's a way to automate the sending of the email announcing the upcoming stream, you know, so you don't have to. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the reason I... I mean, it's somewhat automated. What's not automated is the topic. And I like to include the topic in there so that people know what questions we're, you know, what we're going to be focusing on. So I have to get the topic sorted out first. I hear the feedback. I'm hearing it 100%. I'm going to do everything I can to get them out a little earlier. I hear what you're saying. Um, but oftentimes what that means is I'm actually doing the research and prepping on Saturday at some point. So that's why they're usually a little later. I'll do my best to get a little earlier. Matt. I used to hate the time changes as I was the technical director at a mega church and Sundays were my busy day. Yeah, you'd, and you'd lose an hour of prep time there. <laughs> tricky, tricky stuff. Sound post engineer here. So sad Fairlight doesn't support ARA2 as Auto Align Post 2 is such a powerful tool. That's some feedback we should get to DaVinci Resolve. Yes. In fact, the support in Fairlight for both VST and audio units on Mac was a little rough until more recently. So hopefully they can add ARA2 as well. That'd be brilliant. Greg, can you go back over the plugin stack order considerations for auto align? Yes. So if you're going to be doing uh, corrective EQ, I would probably do that before you do auto align. Then from there, I would take, if you're, if you're going to keep both your lavalier microphone and your boom microphone, kind of mix them together, I would send both of those to a bus. And on that bus is where I would do any compression I need to do. And also I'd probably apply any EQ that I wanted to do for sweetening at that point as well, if I wanted to sweeten the sound. So that's how I would approach it. EQ, corrective first, like high pass filters especially. Um, then auto align. And then um, from there... 
send them to a bus, send the multiple microphones to a bus where I can compress them and EQ for sweetening. Hopefully that makes sense. Kevin, I've seen post editors select different tracks from a poly wave file, all contained on one track in Pro Tools. When I put poly wave files in Pro Tools, it just makes six tracks. How is this done? Um, well, let's switch on back. I, I'm not, okay. First of all, full disclosure, I am a complete newbie when it comes to Pro Tools. So we are going to experiment here to try and answer your question. I don't know the answer to your question as a start, but while we're here, let's just go ahead and see what we can do. I've got a four channel file here. Let me see if what happens if I try to drag that. No, nope. I wonder if I can, here it breaks it up. And see, these are already set up as stereo tracks. So you'd have to set up a new track, I would think, um, and set it as a poly. Poly wave. So here's, this is a four track. Do it in samples. We'll create this track. So this is our new track down here, audio one. I should be able to drag this into that. That's, that's, if that's what you're talking about, that's how you do it there. So I can actually expand this so you can see that a little bit better. And we can also make them maybe a little bit larger. There you go. So there's a, there's that file there. Hopefully that makes sense. Okay. We have more. We have more questions, Danny says. Um, Leo, are you using sound devices, smart batteries on your mixer? What is the average runtime? Um, so let me just pull out the mix pre here. Um, I am just using, this is the MixPre 3. With the 10, I will usually use a, I'll put that in a sound bag, and I'll usually use smart batteries along with a battery distribution system, so the 98 watt hour batteries. But on the MixPre, we're just using the, the L series, the Sony L series MPF batteries. And I would say with these little, these are just little, I can put bigger ones in there too. These are um, 2600 milliamp, so these are basically the smallest, I think, um, NPF style batteries you can get with two of them. I think we probably get three hours, maybe. It's just a guess. I don't I don't usually run this one that long anyway. This is usually for recording my um, the sound for my YouTube videos. So we're not usually using this for production sound, but usually I'd say about three hours is my guess on that. And then if I use bigger batteries, I can get longer run time. All right, Christopher. That's, that's, it's just continuing his. Oh, okay. Smart batteries are all OEM from Inspired Energy. There are cheaper options to get the exact same battery than the Sound Devices branded ones. So yeah, if you're if you're talking specifically about those, Inspired Energy is the is is my understanding is the OEM as well. There you'll also find them under Remote Audio as High Q batteries, um, and then Sound Devices has their own version of that as well. Okay, here's two parts. Two part question. From the continuing topic from before. Okay, Robert, can I change the location of the database? Uh, okay, I, and then here's the second part. I know about archiving. I want to store the projects in a US, on a USB SSD so I can use it on different computers. Um, I don't know the answer to that. I'm sorry. Don't know quite enough about Resolve to know the answer to that. In the past, um, I think there were ways to do that, but I don't know the answer to that. If anyone else does, it knows more about um well let's i mean let's switch over to the mac i don't know if this is something again i'm this is all shooting in the dark so i don't the short answer is i don't know the answer you might under look under here media storage or um, do some searching on youtube where there are lots of resolve editors out there that and colorists that may be able to answer your question more directly than i can Okay, so we're currently exploring and learning the integration with DaVinci Resolve. Okay, that must be, uh, hopefully that's Daniel there. Uh, very good, thank you so much, Daniel, for the update on that. I like this one. Matt Ruff, thank you so much for the super chat. We appreciate all you do for the community. Take Danny out for a date night, all right? <laughs> appreciate that, thank you so much, Matt. And we will do that. Uh, Mark, the HDMI splitter I have used is a 4K 1 in 2 out HDMI splitter by OREI. There you go. 
There's some details there, Graham, if that is hopefully helpful for you. Okay. Keep them coming. All right. Keep them coming, people. We've got another 15 minutes here. I'm going to take a sip of water just so I can uh, keep this voice going here. Give me just a second here. Okay, Danny says we have a question here. Here we go from Christopher. To use a custom database location, Resolve wants you to run a standalone Postgres SQL database, which can be shared among multiple editor editors simultaneously. I guess it's not a question. It's, a, it's an answer for um, the previous question from Robert. So yeah, I don't know how to set that up, but that looks like the answer. Phil, on a recent video, I recorded boom mic through my laptop and a lav on a Tascam DR05. When I aligned them, they were ever so slightly out of time, like a lost second every 10 minutes. Um, yeah, that could be that, that, especially with the consumer devices and computers, they don't have the, their clocks, you know, especially computers where it's multitasking and doing other things. Sometimes those can drift and then uh, record it like a Tascam, um, not the highest grade, clock in it so yeah it wouldn't that's not unusual something like auto align post would would address that but I'm, i mean i'm assuming that a 400 hundred dollar plugin is not uh something you're looking at if you're recording through your laptop and your task cam but yeah that's not not terribly unusual uh task cam dro5 should go for, i would think more like 20 minutes laptops are yeah laptops are tricky especially if you've got other stuff running on them. They tend to be a little bit more reliable if you don't have other stuff running. Diesel, on Resolve, you click on the top left corner next to Projects, then click on Add Project Library. Thank you for that. Okay. okay. That's it. We've got more time here still, people. Danny's typing something. I don't know what's going on over there. Side chat. Uh, Danny is uh, engaging in the side chat under my name. <laughs> We're one and the same. Greg asked another question. For narrative location recording, do you see possible use of auto-align technology aligning a full day's recording syncing all the files to BoomTrack? Um, well, the demo I just did was for a... How long was that clip? Let's take a look. I think it was five or ten minutes long. Let's just see. Do you want me to switch? Okay, it's 30 minutes, I think. Um, let's mute this. I'm going to actually get rid of this here. Yeah, go ahead and switch to this. Okay, I need to get out of the smart tool and use this to get rid of that. And let's just play these back. So this is after 30 minutes. I think, Greg, you're trying to solve a specific problem here. I go back to our smart tool. Let's play from here and see if they're still in sync. Ready. And we're going to cut there. Let's go here. Uh, I'm still lost in the sauce. And it's <laughs> it's fun. It's it's healthy to be lost in the sauce when you're discovering your... Oh, these got moved. we got to undo. There we go. Go to the end. Uh, this is only six minutes long here. Cool. Cut. To offer in terms of music. <laughs> so I just... Uh, that is off the mic. Um, sh short version, Greg, it sounds like you're really trying to kind of sync up a whole lot of really, really big clips. I would assume it would work. Um, maybe Daniel from Sound Radix can address that. Don't know for sure. I'm thinking a full day of narrative. Whoops, could you put that one back oh, up here real yeah. quick? It's from Greg. I'm thinking a full day of narrative filming, 100 to 200 takes. Each needs to be aligned. Um, yeah, I don't know of any sort of batch processing, but you're using lots of smaller takes, so none of them are really long in and of themselves, but you don't want to have to necessarily do each of them. I think it's right now, I think it's still a pretty much a manual process. I mean, you could, yeah, I think you're probably going to want to do that manually. Okay, from Ken. 
I'd be interested in listening to an auto-align post demo with a boom and lav on a walk and talk where both mics are moving. So would I. In fact, um, I'm hoping to do another video on this. It gives a little bit more in depth. And probably in, in lieu of a walk and well, maybe we'll do a walk and talk or another thing that we will do is put a plant mic in and have um, the actor move around, physically walking around and uh, see how we can, how that does hit auto aligning. And we'll go ahead and put a high pass filter on one of the mics as well. Robert says, got it doable, like using a sledgehammer to squish a bug. Yes, I think that's the way to put it, <laughs> which you can do. Um, just try not to damage anything else while you're doing it. Uh, now you're Joe. What mic would you recommend that is similar to a 416 at a lower price point? A uh, few. There's the Rode NTG3, the Deity. That, so th that, that is also an RF bias microphone, just like the Sennheiser MKH416 is. So it's a good mic. Um, another one that is not RF bias, but is a DC bias, more traditional condenser microphone, is the Deity S Mic 2, which is fairly similar in terms of overall timbre and sound to the 416, comes in substantially lower in price. So those are the two that come to mind initially. There are probably others as well, but those are the first two that come to mind. I'd recommend the NTG3 if you can swing that. That's a pretty good mic. 10-year warranty, sounds great. Um, Christopher, time code alone doesn't guarantee sync. It only lines up the start. You also need gen lock for video or word clock for audio to ensure time remains lined up over extended recordings. Absolutely right. Um, yeah, so time code itself doesn't solve this problem. And it also doesn't keep things in sync over time. It just lines them up at the start. And basically it's nudging. It's nudging them into sync at the start and then whatever happens after that. Now, there are some more sophisticated things you can do, um, slightly more sophisticated things you can do. Word clock and for audio and gen lock for cameras is probably the ultimate solution because it keeps everything in sync over time. And that's often what they'll use in broadcast and they'll off, off, also what they'll use when filming 3D, for example, to make sure the two cameras are fully synced and actually taking capturing frames at the exact same time so they don't get out of sync. But another thing you can do with the Tentacle Sync Studio app, you can actually tell it to choose a time in the middle of a clip as opposed to the, the start of a clip, or you can even tell it, I think, the end of the clip. Um, so you can tell it where to choose to sync the two clips together. Um, that doesn't, again, it doesn't solve drift issues, though. It just moderates them to some small extent. <laughs> so if you have just a tiny bit of drift, you can actually choose them to sync in the middle. Um, but that doesn't completely solve the problem. Matt, uh, sorry, Christopher's absolutely right. Like the only way to really keep things perfectly in sync throughout the entire program, especially long form video, which is why you see these used in broadcast is using GenLock, where you have a master clock that tells all of the video cameras exactly when to capture a frame to the millisecond to frame, frame, frame. And they're all getting that same. So they're all, in essence, all those, those, those cameras are using the exact same clock. That's how that works. All right, Wandering North America, also Pro Tools newbie, but for long-term sanity, I would rename each track to something meaningful like Curtis Love. Yes, thank you for that. They came in with the metadata from the recorder, but yes, absolutely, we can do that. And we'll just call this Emma Love. Thank you for that. And this is going to be Emma. Boom. There we go. Go ahead and do that so just to get us a little bit more sanity we all need a little more sanity in our lives okay any more questions out there danny yeah okay got a few more minutes here we are um for those that uh, didn't see we did post a review of the deity spd1 battery distribution box over on the main channel today so if you have a sound bag and are looking for ways to use multiple batteries to power everything in your sound bag which gives you some advantages um, the spd1 is a, is worth looking at um, you can you can route up to three different power sources into the spd1 two on their four pin um, connectors and then one via USB-C. And what that allows you to do is actually change out batteries mid-take if you have to, so you can still power your kit. Um, and it also 
um, has two different switches. So the power comes on two different banks. So if you need to turn, you know, if you're just going to use your boom mic, you can turn your wireless off on the second bank and just power your recorder mixer on the first bank as an example. So pretty cool little device. And it gives you lots of uh, telemetry information if you are using smart batteries. So that's pretty cool. All right. Uh, based on what I do, which is interview stuff, they have to pause every 10 minutes to drink, etc. And with the equipment I used, it has not been an issue. Yeah, I, I agree. It is good to pause every once in a while for the for the benefit of those being interviewed. So they're fresh. I have to take a drink. We're only going for an hour here, but I have to take a drink of water every once in a while just to keep my uh, voice from utterly cracking. Wait, 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 wait. Danny has something to say here. No, no, Go no, ahead. this was a, okay. What I, what I meant to say was that would that then give you an opportunity to cut your file and then they'll be all synced up better. That is exactly what Matt's getting to. So sync, drift doesn't tend to be a problem because you're pausing every 10 minutes anyway, cutting, cutting the sound, cutting camera, and then resyncing on the next clip. So, yeah. Uh, Christopher says, SPD-1 is pretty awesome. I did a video on it as well on my YouTube channel, though obviously nowhere near production value as Curtis Jet Audio videos. Glad, uh, glad to hear we were on the same wavelength there, Christopher. It is a pretty good little device there. It does also have, um, it does have fuses on the, um, on the inputs, or, or on the outputs. No, the inputs. It's only, it's actually, on, maybe it's on both. Um, in any case, they automatically reset. So if you do have anything that goes under or over voltage, it'll actually cut those off so you don't damage the other gear there, which is important. Oh, they're coming in now. Okay, here come the questions. Uh, wish there was a Curtis Jet Audio channel devoted just to Pro Tools. There is not a lot of information for newbies. Um, Kevin, I'm, I'm working that direction. Uh, <laughs> not there just yet, but we will get there at some point. Uh, know your Joe. How would you, you route audio when using a Rodecaster Pro 2 and an ATEM Extreme ISO? Would you record and sync in post or? Um, yes, if you're, if you're not doing live, um, then yeah, you can do it and I would sync in post. Um, that's probably the easy, that's how I would generally approach it. Here's the trick. Rodecaster Pro 2 has, uh, has some line outputs, but I think they're consumer line level outputs. Um, you can route those into an A10 Mini's unbalanced inputs, but I would recommend you use something like an Art Cleanbox Pro. Or is it Art Box Pro? I don't remember what it's called. We demonstrated it a few months ago. It converts from balanced to unbalanced or vice versa. That would be kind of the best way to do that. Um, however, there are some cables you can get since you're going from balanced to unbalanced. You can, um, there's a cable. If you if you take a look on my YouTube channel, I did a short, I actually did one short video so far <laughs> in vertical format. Um, and it's specifically on the cable that I use to route audio from the Rodecaster Pro 2 into an ATEM Mini. And so um, it's a specific cable that takes the balanced audio cuts off the out of phase or the, the inverted phase part of it, and then combines both channels from the Rodecaster Pro into a stereo unbalanced input that you can use on your ATEM. That's another way you can do it. Be careful with that way. It, um, because it's an unbalanced cable all the way through, if you have any electromagnetic or radio frequency in the area, it could, that, that cable can pick it up and transmit it into your audio. So. That's why I would recommend using the art. Um, I think it's called an art clean box. Do you remember? In any case, um, we covered that in end of last year on the live streams. Um, it's a it's a session on converting balanced to unbalanced and vice versa. So you'll be able to find that here on the channel. Mark says, saw your review of the Amaran 200XS LED light. Good review. Thinking of grabbing a few when they come out. I um I like that light quite a lot. I think the dual blue approach to generating white light is really useful, really interesting. And the color quality I got out of that is the best I've seen on an LED light yet. No, I haven't used a bunch of very LED lights or the really really high end stuff that cost thousands and thousands of dollars, so I don't know have I don't have that to compare it to, but for most of the LED lights on the market that are 
in range for most of us, price range for most of us, just fantastic LED light. But um, do keep in mind, those are very plastic. <laughs> so if you're planning on using really big uh, soft boxes, you're going to need to mount the soft box to your stand and then attach the light to the soft box as opposed to the other way, uh, other way around where you attach the soft box just to the light. You just can't bear that much weight. Robert, the ultimate solution is precision time protocol with multi nanosecond universal precision, absolute worldwide time, the SMPTE 2110 standard media over IP uses PTP. Very good. Thank you for that, Robert. That would, that is, yeah, the ultimate solution. Phil asked, do you ever use the speech align function in audition for overdubs? I had a go, but it sounded a bit weird. Um, I, yes, yes, you can do that for overdubs. The, the idea in that case is you're usually trying to replace. And so um, that's how you would typically go about that. But if you wanted to mix them, then auto align post would be the answer for that. Or, you know, again, man, well, yeah, auto align post would be the answer. The ultimate answer. All right. I recommend Benny Knopp, Paul Maunder, and McGowan Soundworks for some cool Pro Tools for Film template videos. Very good. Thanks for the recommendation, Ken. Okay, here's our last. This is a, this is a opinion. This is a last opinion off -topic piece. Opinion. Off topic. Sheriff Logs. What do you think of Spotify turning into TikTok? I uh, haven't given a moment's thought to that. <laughs> um, I mean, there's a place for all those things. I, I, I think it's a little silly that when one new social media thing takes off that a lot of the others try to be the same thing. I think if anyone has a chance of becoming anything like TikTok, it's probably YouTube, but I doubt it. Um, I don't think YouTube will really replace TikTok. It's a different experience. And TikTok is its own thing. It's kind of its own thing, yeah. I, I'd say we let things be their own things, ideally. That's how I think about it. Okay. okay. Um, thank you, everybody, for coming today to our Sound for Video session. Hope you have a great week. Get out there, make some great sound. We'll talk to you again soon. Take care.